What is in the box? Don't look in the box. What are you doing? You probably have these at home. What, beautiful flowers? Nice candles? I don't know, what? Um, I don't know, let's just open it up. Three, two, one. Okay, I definitely don't have these at home. Are you so sure about that? I don't know, but you know what who would know? My dear friend Elizabeth. One of my favorite geologists on the planet. hey -oh, what the heck is all this? Sure, you don't have this stuff at home? I don't know, but you know who's gonna tell me? Elizabeth. So this is gonna be a super fun episode. Elizabeth, you know, some people have commented and they're like, are Elizabeth and Natalie actually friends? We are actually friends. We went, what, hiking a few weeks ago, Elizabeth? Yeah. Yeah, and we sometimes get our nails done together. All right. You've been to my house before. Yeah. I don't have any of this in my house. Yeah, you do. Or do I? Or do I? Oh, so the episode today is all about minerals in your home. I don't, like, I don't know where to start. I'm a little confused okay. at what all of this so, is. So all of these are minerals used either industrially or in home use. So, and some of these may be like, okay, it's like a one removed process. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I guarantee you use products that come from these minerals. So which one do you want to talk about first? Um, I want you to tell me, first of all, what they all are and where okay. they're found. Okay, so this is, it's very heavy. It's galena. And so this guy, you can find it in quite a few different locations, but a major supplier in the United States is in what is called the tri-state districts. That's Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri. And then you've got copper and there's actually a little bit of silver so if you see that gray kind of up at the top so there's a tiny bit of silver there but this is from michigan mm -hmm. this is mica so this is actually mica crystals mica is found all over the world it's an extremely common mineral and it has quite a few uses in the home and in some of the products that we use probably on a daily basis then this this is actually a piece of quartz with a mineral called shelite on it. Some of you may be more familiar if you look at the systemology reference. Shelite can come in an orange color as well. So this piece is actually from Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the only pieces that we have in our collection that are from Japan. Now shelite, the orange colored shelite can actually come from the Middle East as well. But this guy, you mine it and then refine it. So it's, it's again kind of a one step removed process. And then this, you've probably seen it before. We've had this on the episode in... Yeah. Desert Roses. Yes, so if you wanna so... watch that episode, we will put that link up on the screen so that you can see Elizabeth and I in the past. And then here... This is garnet? These are all garnets. That's what I thought. So, and these are, these are called tumbled garnets. And so they're really actually just single garnet crystals that have been polished in a tumbler. I get home and I'm gonna walk to the kitchen because I'm hungry and I want a snack. Okay. What am I gonna see and where am I gonna see it? Okay, so a lot of these, you actually may not directly see them. Okay. What you're probably gonna see initially, if you look at your walls, so this gypsum actually is what we use in drywall. So this is ground up, so not typically with the sand in it, but okay. a colorless gypsum crystal will actually be ground up and used as a constituent in gypsum board. Okay, so walking through kitchen, plaster gypsum. Yeah. Tell me about what I'm gonna see. Like, is there anything here in my TV? Really kind of depends. So you can actually have quite a bit of different minerals in your TV. What I'd start with is say your wiring. So we have a lot of copper wiring. You can actually have lead. So Galena is made of a lot of lead, like in soldering. So when you're trying to attach wires, you're trying to like put pipes together and things like that, you use lead solder to attach them together. So in welding. No. Is that dangerous? So galena is about, so it's lead sulfide. So it's predominantly lead. But a lot of galena mines and a lot of mines that actually predominantly extract lead with galena as the main ore are actually termed silver mines. And that's because if you watch, I think it's Christopher's video on silver, he actually talks about argentiferous galena. So what that means is argentiferous means lead rich, or not lead rich, excuse me, silver rich. And so this galena can have maybe up to 1% silver, but the silver is worth so much more than the lead once it's extracted and refined that those lead mines turn into silver mines. So copper, what do you think okay, copper is used I in? I had a copper pan of my yeah. mother's. Yeah. 
I have copper in my oven. Isn't it like conduct, like there's gotta be copper wiring. Yeah, so a lot of our wiring in our homes is all made of copper. That's, I hate to say this, but we're like when thieves come in and to a building project and strip all the wiring out, they're actually selling the copper. No way. Dead serious. Huh, okay, so copper probably is in my TV. There is probably copper... Piping. It, well, yeah, the piping in the apartments. Yeah. Copper pans. I mean, copper pots and pans. Yeah, so, so really, we use so much copper because it's extremely conductive. It's ductile, meaning it's easy to work with. And really, like in the United States, we've been a historic producer of copper in the Great Lakes region for centuries. I mean, really, it's just an extremely useful mineral, and it's mixed into a lot of the things that we use every day. So, like our batteries. You have lead, some copper copper, zinc. So I don't have it up here, but there's actually another mineral, you know, without it, we would be pretty lost. But in batteries, so like our car batteries, mm -hmm. you have a lot of lead and zinc and zinc is mined or a lot of zinc can be mined here in Tennessee. So it's actually comes from a mineral called sphalerite. So if you've ever heard us talk about the mine Elmwood, so if you ever heard me talk about Elmwood mine yeah, with fluorite, yeah, yeah, for sure. So actually what they're mining there is the zinc out of all the sphalerite that's there. Well then like mica, it's actually very useful industrially. Let's see no, if I can you did do not just do that. Yeah, I did it. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. Okay, where is there ah, mica boogers. besides in my makeup? So you can have mica in your makeup. You can have it in some cleaning products. You can what? have it. It's actually very thermally resistant. It actually used to be in microwaves and ovens. What about, so let's say in your lip. Why are you ripping? It's flaky. You know what it reminds me of? This is my of? teaching specimen. Did you ever you eat those Nutter Butters when you were kids? Yes, but a, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the so ones they're that, like, the really flaky. You no, know, the little Debbie ones that had like the wafer cookies that you pull off. Yeah. Does that not kind of look like one? No. Kind of reminds me of it because you're pulling off these little flakes. These little layers. Well, so what was so useful about mica is number one, it's readily available. Number two, you can break it into these sheets super easy. Like if I really wanted a bigger piece, I could break it. I don't really want to, but they're extremely resistant to breakage. I can pull out some of these. I don't want to break all of them, but. So your teaching specimen, you're allowed to rip the. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't let the kids rip it. But... Can I see it? Woo, suddenly all of a sudden there's mica everywhere. Okay, so makeup. Microwaves. They used to actually be the doors to some ovens. I've um, also heard of windows. Yes. Long so a long time ago. Yeah. So a long time ago, you could take. So in Russia, these crystals come in extremely big pieces. So they were these big flat pieces. They would actually shear them and then use them as windows because they were really good at trapping heat or keeping the heat out during the summer. Basically, they resist releasing all that thermal energy enough that so like with a microwave oven they were a barrier, or not a microwave, a um, toaster oven, they were a barrier for the heat leaking out to like the side. So if you tried to touch the toaster, it wouldn't burn you really bad. But so even now, these things, these guys are most famously probably still used a lot in our makeup. So a lot of your, well, I guess like the minerals products, I don't know if we're allowed to say products on here. Like what, eyeshadows and stuff? Yeah, so for a lot of our eyeshadows, micas can actually be used in paint to keep the color in suspension. So like on house paints and things like that. Okay, I had no idea. Yeah, so the because the flakes are so thin and because they're really resistant to weathering as well, so that's why people use them for windows, they are actually industrially used in the United States. I think it's almost 20% of it is used in making compounds to keep paints in solution or they're used for like drywall spackling and things so like that. You could have a wall that has this and this on top of it. Yeah, like pretty much. Alabama, or plaster and then mica in the paint on top of it. Right. And so it actually is also a paint brightener as well. So it can make some paints look appear white, brighter than what they would have. Okay, so tell me about garnet. Okay, so garnets are actually really interesting. So garnet. I never would have guessed. If you said, Natalie, we're doing household minerals today, I literally never would have guessed garnet. I would have said lead, copper. I would have said, probably wouldn't have said mica, to be honest. And I would have said gypsum, but I never would have said garnet. So okay, where so, can I find garnet? So garnets, a lot of times, are actually industrially used as an abrasive. So you know sandpaper? Yeah. You know how it's red? No. So there's some sandpapers that are on oh, the market. Do you really think I sand things? Okay, sorry, I do. Do you, I, <laughs> literally, I don't think I've ever used sandpaper in my life. Okay, well, I have been sanding. Well, so with some types of sandpaper, they actually, instead of using like quartz silica, mm -hmm. they grind up garnets. No way. And so that's why some of the sandpapers are red. It's not a paint for some of them. So I've seen online that they'll actually say on the back, if you flip it, it'll say garnet sandpaper, garnet abrasive. These are also used in things like water jet cutting in 
sandblasting. Another thing that I was actually really surprised at is that they are used in water filtration. These, because garnets are very inert and they have a high specific gravity, they can actually sink to the bottom of the, I guess, whatever type of filter you're using. And so they don't get into the water very easily. And so because they're inert, they're safe to use in drinking water. And so what it'll do is you can actually grind them up fine enough that things that are only like a micron or two wide can actually pass through. So they're really good for use in water filters. I, no way. Like my Brita in the fridge has garnet in it. That's usually carbon. So, the black specks. Yes. And it really depends. And I think with the water filtration, I couldn't find exactly what companies used it or things like that. But to be honest, it's probably more for like industrial uses. So like here, so this Shelite, you wouldn't think much, but it's actually an ore of tungsten. Which tungsten is in men's rings. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. But so like with this guy, what happens is, is that you mine it, crush it, and then they basically smelt the ore out. And so really what that means is that basically you get a really, really hot molten metal. I, I don't want to call it a liquid, but it's a fluid. It's a fluid, but it's not quite a liquid. So it, it flows. So it's like lava. And basically, depending on the temperature that you burn it at, you get different metals out of solution. And so when you're smelting something, if you need a certain melting point, you can choose the melting point that you want to burn it at, and that'll get you different things. So in like with galena, and I, and I thought that was absolutely fascinating, which was that even though the galena can only be up to like 1% silver, mm -hmm. it actually will take over the mine's profits. Are you serious? Yeah, so the lead is not worth nearly as much as that 1% of silver. So they'll melt this down just so to get the down silver. So they'll melt it down just to get the silver and they'll make the lead the byproduct, which okay. is really cool. Well, I'm like here, since you have silver in this copper, silver per weight is actually worth more than copper, but it's rather uncommon. But if all of a sudden you were to get into a mining situation where you were finding a lot of these, mm -hmm. you may turn into a silver mine rather than staying a copper mine and have your copper be the byproduct. Um, so what else? I'm trying to think so in my bathroom. In my bathroom. bathroom. Okay, cool. So I don't have any of it here, but do you know kyanite? Yeah, actually, fun fact, first stone I sorted, sorted at JC. Kyanite is the first stone I sorted at JTB. I will never forget kyanite. So do you know what's really cool about kyanite? Uh, you're gonna tell me. So it's used in ceramics. Oh, you know what, we talked about this. I was gonna bring one of my ceramic pots. I totally yeah. forgot. So kyanite is actually more commonly used industrially, well, and in our everyday lives. So you know when you press the brakes, there's a brake pad. Mm -hmm. Part of that ceramic brake pad is made of kyanite. So not only are there gemstones in my house. They're in your car. And then also in your car is something called cordierite, which is part of your catalytic converter. And that's also the other name for cordierite is iolite. But so cordierite is actually using catalytic converters. And that's because with the cordierite, when you align the crystals in a certain direction, you can actually get a very predictable heat expansion. And so they use it to keep it from cracking and breaking which is pretty crazy. And same with kyanite. Kyanite's commonly used in like kilns to like Wait. brick kilns, like and because kyanite expands and contracts with exposure to heat in a very specific way, they use it and mix it in to the ceramics. So like it's in your bathtub, your sinks, in your brake pads, and it's also in your spark plugs. You know, don't laugh too hard. But when I was researching this a little bit more to see specifically where these things were actually used, because I knew they were used. I mean, they're they're be no reason to mine them unless we're using them for something. So if you have a oven or a stove top and it's gas, have you ever left the gas on too long no, on a stove top? I, actually, I hate gas stove tops. Okay, well, have you ever been around it and you smell I the smell them. of the I gas? I hate those. Well, so that smell of that gas, naturally, natural gas has no smell. So we add sulfur oh. to the gas to make it smell so that you can tell when there's a leak. Or when you left your- Or when you leave an eye on which, too long. Okay, so bathroom living room, kitchen, garage. Well, and then of course like electronics. Well, so yes. like your garage, so your garage zinc. doors. Yeah, so zinc, copper, lead are really just beyond belief used in our everyday lives. Like with fluoride, I know you use fluoride every day in your life. Yeah, my toothpaste. That was really Smiled weird to me, it. but you brush your teeth with fluoride. I do know that feldspar can commonly be used as an anti-scratch abrasive for cleaning because feldspar, when you crush it and grind it, is 
very soft on different products. Now, if you were like me and you live in a very old house, you could no, have... you don't have asbestos, do you? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've talked about that actually on the channel before. So what it is, is I have a type of insulation in my house called vermiculite. And really, as long as you don't stir it up and as long as you don't mess with it, it's pretty safe and honestly one of the greatest like fire retardant products you can have in your house. Mm -hmm. So what it is, vermiculite is actually made of a certain amount, or it's mined, so it's rock, but they pelletize it and it's made of mica and a little bit of asbestos. And so what it is, is that it looks, there. It, it actually was a product called zeolite, which it's not technically a zeolite mineral, but that's what they termed it. Well, so it's these little pellets and they seriously look just, like if you took this and you pelletized it and it looks like that. Oh, seriously? Yes. For asphalt roofing, a lot of mica is actually added onto the surface of it because it resists weathering so well. Mm -hmm. And it actually sometimes helps keep a little bit of like the algae and stuff from growing. Do you want to do a closer look? You know how the story goes on this channel. Oh, yeah. All right, so guys, take a closer look. I'm gonna make you take a closer look at the mica, though. Look at that, how thin that sheet is. I mean, you can completely see my nail behind that. And I've got, of don't course, drop, don't drop all I know, I'm like I'm sitting here going. below you. All right, so take a look at these garnets. They're absolutely beautiful. The color, I like the tumbled look. It is pretty. But take a look at the garnets. That you can, you know, you can find in your home. It's a beautiful gemstone and it's used in jewelry and it's, you know, got quite the history, but you're gonna drop these all over the floor, aren't you? But you can also find it in your home. today don't forget to like subscribe and ring that bell all right guys thanks for watching tell us but thank you we will catch you hopefully in a few weeks yeah yeah you'll come back soon oh yeah awesome see you guys bye